Hi, I'm John Thielen. We're out on the Lax Lake today. I'm going to show you a different technique, a different way to catch fish when the bite's tough. And You look around, you look behind me here, and you're going to see glass calm water. Most of the time, people aren't going to go fishing today, or they're just going to go out suntanning. We're actually going to go out catching. Stay right where you're at, and we'll show you how we do it on a day like today. How could I possibly be expected to handle school on a day like this? You're listening to the RedOutdoors.com podcast. No, baby, you dig it the most. A podcast about hunting, fishing, and everything else outdoors. When this baby hits 88 miles per hour, you're going to see some serious sh- I'm your host, Ron Hustovic, outdoor writer, photographer, and founder of RedOutdoors.com. Well, that right there may be the reason you had difficulty finding game for me. Covering tips and tactics from the outdoors experts, both in the studio and out in the field. Damn, we're in a tight spot. So without further ado, here's the show. That would be great. Thank you for that lovely tune. That funky music will drive us till the dawn. A lot of times people think that you can't catch these fish on glass calm days. And what you got to realize is they just don't move as much on yeah, glass no, calm days. So you actually got to drop right on top of them. And that's what we're doing driving around here is we're getting right on top of the fish because they won't move around as much without the wind blowing. That's, that is a nice one. Let's keep it right over here. Perfect. Perfect fish. 17 and a half inches. You know, here's how this fish ends up in the boat. It's a glass calm day, and if you look around, you'll see that there's no action in the water. What happens when you have the wind blowing is it stirs everything up, it gets the bait fish moving, and it makes the walleyes move to chase down the bait fish. When you get a glass calm day like today, a lot of times what happens is you'll you'll get an algae bloom. We've had a bug hatch overnight. These fish are full, and there's nothing to make them move. So they're all just laying around, and I'll see pods of two or three of them on my graph, and all I'm doing is stopping the boat we're flopping the bobbers right over the back and putting it right on top of them. And the fact that these fish won't move horizontally right now to chase down bait is totally offset by the fact that they will come up if you put it right in front of them. So that's what we're doing. But the whole key is getting on top of the fish and dropping a bobber over the top of them. If we drifted a Lindy rig by them or say I went by with the trolling motor with a Lindy rig, they won't chase anything horizontal today. So that's why we're having to do it this way. And it's very effective. You catch a lot of fish. So don't think that on a glass calm day, you can't catch fish. You just got to change your tactics a little bit. It's only a single, but we'll try them. Usually I'm looking for more than one, but after driving around there a little bit, I didn't see them. So you know what? We'll, we'll take our chances here and try for the single. A lot of times you can make that one by yourself. Now the shaky camera work you're going to see here is just to prove a point. We mark the fish, we toss the slip bobbers overboard, let them drop down, and bam, all of a sudden it's not very long and we got a fish yanking down a bobber. And this is how you do it. This is why it's so effective. You take some time driving around, but when you find them and you mark them, boom. Pretty decent fish. Good. You know, that, that one there was actually a single. Nick picked that one up. I mean, we dropped right on top of it. And actually, what? You're going down. That's not, nah, I, I think, if it is, we'll worry about it later. I think the fish is in there. But it, that's a case of, you know, there was just one fish there. And uh, Nick dropped right over the back of the boat. And my Ooh. transducer is actually right under here. Is it 20? Yeah, that's, yeah, that's a good one. Just step back, oops, Nick. There you go. Fun to catch, aren't they? Oh, yeah. I'm going to Nice, fat, healthy Malax walleye. Get him right up in there. Perfect. Awesome. Let it go. show you what I'm doing here. This is actually, let me start by showing you what this is. This is bait, okay? And I can tell that's bait because I didn't get a real good defined arc with red in it. It's just kind of dark blue and it's kind of a blob. 
that's going to be a bunch of perch. What I'm actually doing is I'm driving around a spot, and I'll zoom out on this Lake Master chip here and show you. This is a reef that runs north and south, and I've got icons all over it. I've been dropping icons here the last couple days. When I come across a big pile of fish, I always drop an icon. This is where there's a school today. I'm using that uh, diver symbol today. We'll come back along there. Now, there's a fish right there. So basically, what I, I think the most important thing I can convey about how we're fishing today is being able to use your graph in conjunction with your mapping unit with a Lake Master chip in there to be able to find the structures, drop icons when you find the fish, and then be able to flop over the back and get right on top of the fish because they're not running around. On days like today when I drop those icons, very seldom are those fish moving. I can go right back to them and we can catch a fish out of the school, then we'll go back and get another fish out of the school, and we'll just keep working them. Then eventually I'll leave, I'll give them a little bit of a break, and then I'll come back and they're usually right in the same neighborhood. And you can see these fish are right on the edge of a 24 foot hump on top of this structure. Okay, and you can see that icon right there, and you can see all my trails, how I've been working around there. A lot of times when you drop on them, when it's this calm, sometimes you, you miss them. And you think you were right there, but you miss them by five, 10 feet. And they're not moving around horizontally, they're, they're only gonna go vertical. So what you gotta do is bring the bobbers a little closer to you, but then when you feel like you've pulled out of the zone, you need to just pull them back in, reel it up, drive back around, come back over them again, and start over. Because a lot of times that 10 feet is all the difference, and the fish just won't move. You can watch walleyes in a fish tank, and a lot of times they'll be just down belly to the bottom, and they won't move for hours. You can dump all the minnows in the top that you want to try to feed them, and they still won't move. They'll just lay their belly to the bottom. When it's time to eat, they'll lift, and they'll just go eat. They'll do it for 15 minutes. That'll be it. So just goes to show you how much you need to land right on top of them. Now we've been marking them on the bottom, but you're not Lindy rigging. Yeah, you know, I'm really not very interested in fishing for those fish that are down on the bottom. And the, the main thing there is, if it's laying on the bottom, I know he's not in a feeding mode. So what I'm doing is I'm driving around and I'm looking for ones that are up off the bottom. Now they're still not moving around and they may not be in a real positive feeding mode, but at least they're up and I know they're more willing to be active. So I usually try to find that fish first. Very seldom will you see me drop on a fish when it's on the bottom. As tempting as it is sometimes, I just I find that my success rate is a lot lower. I tend to think that if I can come across a school of fish, which we call a Christmas tree or a bunch of them all together, that I can usually get a fish out of every three drops. When they're on the bottom, I'm thinking it's probably more like one out of ten drops. So obviously I'm better off just keeping my lines out of the water and driving around until I find the right fish versus putting my line in the water more. And, you know, it's kind of, it kind of contradicts what people think you know people say well you should have, you got to have your line in the water to catch fish and I guess I look at it a little bit differently you got to be on fish to catch fish Pull them up. I've got a, got a fish here you want to feed them plenty of line make sure they take it reel down to it if you look at the tip of my rod you want to keep it up at about a 45 degree angle and wait till you can feel see that little bit of bend in it right there set the that's all there is to it. A lot of people, and myself included, tend to want to point the rod at the fish when they're reeling in the slack. And, and what that does is actually it, it takes your rod out of play. The line doesn't have near as much play in it as the tip of the rod. So that fish will feel you before you can feel him. And he'll spit the bait out before you ever get the hook set. It never lets you get the slack out of your line. Let me show you, let me point one more thing out too. What Nick was talking about, about bending that rod, you notice he did not set the hook sideways. He went straight over his head. And because of that, see where this fish is hooked? That is the perfect hook set. 